Hello and welcome to another Cyberpunk 2077 video. Don't forget before we dive in that I reviewed this game very recently and you can click up here if you want to watch it before essentially I ruin the whole game for you. We'll be recapping exactly what happens in Cyberpunk for those of you who haven't or have no wish to play it or those of you who have completely forgotten. Naturally, this game has three different intros and lots of different endings determined by your choices. I'll recap this game as per my playthrough with my intro and the ending that I received, but I will let you know when alternate options are available. Let's go. Welcome to Night City, the busy, bustling, smoggy world of Cyberpunk 2077, full of life, crime and uh, bugs basically. Our character is a customizable player known simply as V. After we've carefully crafted our desired penis or boobs or both if we so desire, well done CD Projekt Red for being inclusive to all communities, we choose our backstory. Our options are Nomad starting as a drifter who lives in the Badlands outside of the city, a corpo who starts working for one of the game's many business corporations, or a street kid born and raised amongst the crime of the street. Now I chose street kid and my game begins in a bar. Speaking to Pepe, the bartender, he tells me he is in debt to a local fixer called Kirk. Very scary name. I offer to help Pepe and I take on a job with Kirk to try and absolve the debt. The job seems fairly straightforward. We are to steal a high-end car from a nearby car park. What could go wrong? We find the car without any resistance and get inside, but before we can set off, we are then held at gunpoint by another would-be thief. Before the standoff can be resolved, the police show up and we are knocked out. Strangely, we awake in the streets and not in police custody alongside the man who tried to rob us. He introduces himself as Jackie Wells and I think, oh yeah, hey, I, I recognize you from the game's trailer. V and Jackie strike up an unlikely friendship and we see a montage of the duo getting drunk, doing jobs and hanging out together to suggest a period of time has passed. Soon we're connected to Dexter Deshawn, a somewhat famous local fixer known for offering high-risk, high-reward jobs. V and Jackie, both small-time mercs, see this as a wonderful opportunity to hit the big time and become famous around Night City. Dexter Deshawn, or as I like to call him WWE's world's strongest man, Mark Henry, explains the job. We are to break into the hotel room of Yorinobu Arasaka, who is the son heir of the mega rich and powerful Arasaka Corporation. Think Amazon, but slightly less evil. When in the room, we are to steal a biochip known as a relic. Unbeknownst what this relic consists of, we set off on a heist to steal it. The plan proceeds very well until Yorinobu himself returns to his room. We steal the chip and hide behind a nearby screen only to witness Yorinobu's father and the head of the Arasaka Corporation, Saburu, arrive. Shit the bed. The duo argue before Yorinobu, and get this, murders his own bloody dad. V and Jackie are behind the screen during all of this and witness the murder. They then see Yorinobu trying to claim that Saburo's bodyguard, Goro Takamura, poisoned Saburo. Takamura flees and is pursued by Arasaka personnel, allowing us time to escape. When leaving, we are discovered and fired upon, causing us to fall from the hotel penthouse. We miraculously survive the fall and fight our way out of the hotel. During the commotion, the relic's protective case is damaged. In order to preserve the sought-after prize, V decides to insert the cyberware chip into her head. However, soon after, we discover Jackie, has been mortally injured and dies in our arms. <laughs> we return to Dexter to Sean and discuss what went down, and Dex is furious about the unwanted police and TV attention that V and Jackie have caused and shoots V in the head. Fucking motherfucker. A cold move indeed from WWE's Mark Henry. At this point, I thought this game is, is actually quite short. In fact, it might be the shortest game um, I've ever actually played. But then, just before the credits roll, V awakens in a landfill site. We see Dex again, but this time, he is shot in the head by a man we recognise as Goro Takamura from previously in the game. The man framed and now hunted for Saburo Arasaka's murder. Are you still with me? Good. 
After passing in and out of consciousness, we awake at our friend Victor's house, who is a ripper doc, someone who installs and repairs cyberware and also seems to perform normal doctor's services too. Victor explains that Dexter's bullet hit the chip that's in our head and it activated a resurrection nanotech on the chip. Confused? Yeah, me too. We learn that the chip contained the consciousness stroke soul of the legendary rock star and terrorist Johnny Silverhand. Silverhand died during an assault on Arasaka Tower in 2023, but it seems his soul was stored on the relic by Arasaka, so essentially we have a dead rocker terrorist living in our head. Victor explains that the chip is essentially keeping us alive, but over time the chip will consume us and within a matter of weeks, Silverhand's memories will overwrite V's. Simply put, the consciousness of Silverhand will take over V's body. To make things more complicated, we cannot remove the chip as we'll simply die. Due to the nature of the chip, we begin to see Johnny and talk to him internally sharing thoughts. Things start off rocky as Johnny uh, tries to kill us. Misty, who works with Victor and was the girlfriend of our late friend Jackie, provides us with two types of pills. One pill will negate the Silverhand influence, essentially getting him out of our head for a while, whilst the other will do the opposite and will give Silverhand full control over our body for a period of time. After Johnny's attempted murder, we pop a pill and he disappears. We meet with Takamura, who is hell-bent on proving his innocence and needs V's help as the only living true witness. He agrees to help V find a solution to safely remove the chip if she helps expose Yorinobu. Meanwhile, we continue to talk to Johnny and our relationship begins to develop. He's an arrogant arsehole, but occasionally the two are on the same page. Silverhand often offers advice to V when it comes to decision making in missions, which can be taken or ignored at the player's will. As time progresses and as V's health deteriorates, we begin to have seizures, further highlighting the rush to find a cure. We also start to relive Johnny's significant memories, including his time as a rocker for the band Samurai and his actual death during his raid on Arasaka's tower at the hands of the maniac killer Adam Smasher, who is bloody massive. Amongst these memories, we learn of Alt Cunningham, Johnny's on-off love interest. Alt was a highly skilled netrunner who actually designed Soul Killer, the program used to capture Johnny's soul. She was later captured by Arasaka and forced to create the program for them, and they, in turn, designed a digital prison for trapped souls and consciousnesses called Mikoshi. Johnny led a rescue attempt for Alt but found that they had used Soul Killer on her already, meaning Alt was beyond rescue. This in turn led Silverhand to seek revenge, which explains the attack on Arasaka and his death. However, in a twist, we learn that due to Alt's prowess as a netrunner, she managed to survive as an artificial intelligence. Confused still? Yes, me too. But don't worry, it kind of begins to make sense. We continue to work leads for Takamura, most of which lead to dead ends. Along the way, we meet several important characters who help. Judy is a brain dance editor, essentially a video editor, but the video is actual memories. River Ward, a police officer turned private eye. Kerry Uridine, Silverhand's ex-band member and now rich solo artist. And Pan Am Parker, a member of the Nomad family, the Aldicados. All of these characters can be romanced depending on which sex your V is and the choices that you make in-game. I digged Pam bad, but sadly, she's not into girls. So I ended up with Judy. We have sex and then she proceeds to send me lots of flirty text messages. And I'm like, nice one, but I'm currently dying, Judy. So I'm a bit busy. So thirsty. We next learn that we need to find Alt Cunningham as she may have a solution to our Johnny problem. To do so, we must breach the Black Wall, which is a dark web kind of thing. It involves us physically entering the internet via special technology. The game offers you several different approaches to this. I sought help from a gang called the Voodoo Boys, and after running some errands for them, their netrunners hook me up to the Black Wall, and, and I enter physically the internet. When there, we meet Alt in her AI form and she explains in order to safely remove the chip and continue living, 
we need to find a way into Mikoshi, Arasaka's digital fortress stroke soul prison, which exists at the bottom of Arasaka Tower. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, no, no problem. Seems, seems easy enough. Meanwhile, Takamura devises a plan to kidnap Hanako Arasaka, the daughter of Saburo. With V's help, he does so and begins to explain what really happened to Saburo. Hanaka surprisingly believes Takamura, saying that she has long suspected her brother, Yorinobu. But before the conversation can continue, Arasaka find us and lay siege to the building and recover Hanako. Takamura is killed in the process, although he can be saved depending on your choices. But to be honest, I, I wasn't really a huge fan of him, so fuck him. Either way, his part in the story is essentially over for now, only appearing possibly as a cameo role in one of the multiple endings. We later meet Hanako, who offers us a deal. Simply interrupt an Arasaka board meeting and expose Yorinobu. She promises us safe entry to the building and to help us with removing the chip. When leaving the meeting, our condition continues to worsen. Johnny pleads with us to take the second pill, allowing him to continue the mission in our body, fearing that V can't continue. Depending on your conversation choices in the game, you are even now friends with Johnny or still slightly hostile. In my play, we had grown close to each other and you even begin to see Johnny's fiery temperament calm somewhat, even showing some moments of empathy and compassion. We suffer another seizure and this one almost is the end of us. We awake once again in Victor's surgery and he tells us it's now or never and we have mere hours until Johnny's memories completely overwrite ours. We sit upon a rooftop with Johnny and after an emotional final call with whomever our love interest is, Judy in my case, we are forced to choose one of three options. These choices define our ending and were genuinely tough. They are to take Hanako's deal, risking trusting a corporation for what seems like an easier route, to take the second pill and allow Johnny and his friend Rogue to assault Arasaka Tower in our body like they did many years ago, or to call on our friend Pan Am and her nomad family to help us try and fight our way into Arasaka Tower but risking the lives of innocents in the process. Or there is a final choice, which is to end it all there and then and commit suicide on the rooftop, which will end the game right there. I chose to go with Pan Am and her nomads. I didn't trust Hanako and I didn't fully trust Johnny to have control of my body for what is the most important few hours of my life. After getting Pan Am and her Aldercado family on board, we assault a nearby construction site to access an underground drilling tunnel which runs under Arasaka Tower. Eventually, V, Pan Am and the Aldercado family leader Saul get inside Arasaka. After stealthily progressing through the building, we reach Mikoshi. However, Adam Smasher, remember him, arrives and crushes Saul's head like a Malteser. Alongside Pan Am, we fight Smasher and eventually overcome him. Before killing him, we reveal to him that his former nemesis, Johnny Silverhand, is living in our head and this is for him. With V in critical condition, Pan Am helps drag us over the final steps and we connect to Mikoshi. When inside, we meet with Alt and Silverhand. Alt explains that in order to separate V and Johnny, she has captured V soul, much like the others in Mikoshi. She further explains that should V leave Mikoshi and return to her body, she will only have six months to live, as her body now believes that Johnny is the rightful host. We are naturally pissed off, suspecting that this was Alt's plan all along as a means to allow her ex-lover to live again in V's body. However, it's Johnny himself who tells V to return, telling us to live our remaining six months to our fullest and he will remain in the cybernet forever. So again, we are presented with a choice, return to our body as V and die in six months, or let Johnny have our body and live as Silverhand indefinitely. Again, another tough decision. I'd grown attached to Silverhand and actually felt quite emotional at this point. That said, I chose to return and live out my six months wrapped between Judy's legs. When leaving Mikoshi, Johnny bids us farewell and tells us to keep fighting. Ah, oh, Johnny. Upon waking, we find ourselves with Pan Am overlooking Night City. 
Our new plan is to leave the city for good with the nomads and live a life on the road. Pan Am suggests some doctor contacts she knows, suggesting there could be a hope for a cure to these impending death. We cross the border and leave Night City for good. V breathes in the free air and is joined by Pan Am for a final scene looking out to the horizon. Which is a bit weird considering Pan Am wasn't my love interest in the game and instead my actual girlfriend Judy was in the back of the car just playing on a Game Boy. Either way, the game ends with V beginning a new life on the road with the Nomads. For how long? We'll never know. This ending was called The Star and I believe is widely considered the best ending you can get. All the endings vary substantially and a quick YouTube search should reveal all of them if you wish to explore further. And that's what happens in Cyberpunk 2077. As I said at the beginning, you can check out my review of the game to find out what it scored according to our 10 pillars of gaming by clicking up here or subscribe for more videos just like this.